Hi, everyone. Today is Thursday, March 24th of 2022, and we are here for the weekly crypto review with none other than, of course, Muliant. How's it going, Moo? Oh, man. I am, uh, I'm just buzzing. You know, that's that's kind of how it feels. I'm just buzzing. Uh, we were so excited to get into this time frame. I think we're right here right now. Uh, the markets are just doing so well. Uh, one of the indicators for us was going to be those dino co coins kind of resurgence. And we'll see if that has some staying power. But it was really nice the other day to see Bitcoin Cash uh, and some of the what we would call the dino coins, some of the older coins that have been left and forgotten. Um, and, and a lot of them just being purely transactional coins do well. Um, but it's it's just amazing what's happening now. We're getting amazing pumps, uh, amazing growth, amazing price uh, rise in the market, uh, much higher highs, much higher lows. Um, I'm just I'm super excited. Uh, let's Sam, let's just go ahead. I don't want to derail us, but we should probably get started pretty soon. Uh, Bitcoin's about ready to break uh, 44K. Uh, right now we're setting at 43.9. Any thoughts about Bitcoin as it feeds the rest of the market? Um, well, it's definitely getting set up for a really good month of April. Um, and of course, you know, get ready because we always have those pullbacks. But the problem with trying to time the market is that some of the legs up can be pretty huge. Like we saw in um, November, December of mm -hmm. 2020, if you had jumped off when the market hit one trillion, you would have been feeling bad because the market never saw one trillion again. It right. kept going and kept going and kept going and eventually had a high in 2020 um, one of uh, we did hit the three trillion in November, didn't we? In 2021. Yeah. So, yep. yeah. So that's the problem with the pullbacks is you never know how high it's going to go before it pulls back. So the most important thing I think that we just need to focus on is what price did you get your Cardano at? Exactly. You know, how many Cardano do you have obviously Absolutely. somebody who bought it at a dollar fifty and has like maybe ten thousand of them is going to have a different mindset than someone who bought it at seven cents who has a hundred thousand of them right so that's exactly. where you, this that's how you got to play this really yep thank you for saying that um because i i think we're moving into a really interesting time and you know we we all know people that bought uh you know, or got a hold of ADA at two cents or four cents or eight cents or 12 cents or a dollar or 60 cents or three dollars. So it's really all individual, isn't it? Uh, but it's nice. It's nice to see ADA getting some traction here. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just super excited about the markets kind of just in general, once again, and I, I feel like I'm a broken record now. But, you know, seeing Terra, for example, uh, Daquan basically uh, create a stable coin and um, he's really confusing the maxis, right? Because he's anchoring his his uh, smart contract layer and its stable coin, US uh, Terra, uh, with Bitcoin. So it's a Bitcoin reserve and he's committed to buying 10 billion uh, 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 dollars worth of Bitcoin. Just things like this. There's so many things going on. There's so much investment. I can't even, so you remember how I used to track the VC money and some, I can't even keep up with it anymore. I stopped because it's just, there's, there's so many new raises every day. I, I just, it's, it's useless. It, let's just say it's an avalanche of money. We're even seeing projects buy other projects, right? We saw Alameda research, uh, buy every single basically token, um, and if anybody doesn't know, Alameda Research and Sam Bakeman Freed are partners um, in a lot of ventures. And um, Alameda Research basically went out and bought basically the entire technology stack of uh, Stargate Finance. And I can show that later with uh, DeFi Llama. But it's just amazing what's happening. Like lots of consolidation, a lot of investment, a lot of new users. Um, there's a ton of new wallets springing up. And Ethereum, and I'll show this later, but, you know, a lot of the high quality blue chip coins are, are being extracted from the market. Um, you know, several days ago, I think 180,000 ETH were removed from uh, composite exchanges. And then just like two days ago, another 151,000 uh, Ethereum uh, was, was removed from market. So this is cool. This is right where we're at. I'm just super excited. Can you tell I'm excited? I'm just excited. I think it's here. I think all that we've been waiting for. And, you know, there was a lot of people who are, not in our crowd, but in the crypto sphere back in 2018, 2019, 2020, um, they left, they left. There was a lot of negativity there. And um, unfortunately some came back during the highs of 2021. They like, they piled on and yep. then they got stung because that's, you know, what can happen when you FOMO into something 
instead of, you know, waiting patiently and waiting for the deals. We will find, though, that as the market rises and as we start to gallop towards a market cap of $3 trillion <laughs> and then $8 trillion, that um, we're going to find that the the number, the it's not going to be as easy to get the multiples that we're getting now. And that occurred to me when I had a reading with a couple and they were talking about, you know, taking like their first um, profits of 10% once they were 10 times. And then they were like, oh, and then we'll wait till it goes another 10 times and then another 10. And I'm like, well, if it goes another 10 times and you're actually a hundred times your original investment. And I mean, most of my stuff, I'll be out of it by then. Like once it's a hundred times, I mean, there are a few exceptions of stuff that I kept well past the 100 times like Doge. But I mean, that was, I bought that in 2017. So right. again, it's a different game. When you look at it now, what is Doge? It's like around 13 cents, 14 cents, something in that range. So you're looking at if it goes 10 times, then it goes to like between $1.30 and $1.50, you know? So then I would be at that point wondering, okay, I think I'm going to pull the trigger on some more of this Doge coin. It's not like 2017. So I just wanted to, again, make that point to people that, you know, it's becoming more and more difficult to find those like 100 times coins. And what you have to remember as well is that, you know, back in 2017, when I got Doge and, you know, bought my first Cardano and, you know, bought some other stuff that are still doing well today, um, there was other stuff that no longer exists today, you know, exactly. so that money is gone. It's gone. It went away like, you know, like with, you know, any of the ICOs that went down that didn't get developed, it, it's gone. You know, yep. so that's the thing is that you do take those chances for the early days. And what I love about today is that somebody could come in and literally just buy, you know, Tezos, Polkadot, Cardano, Ethereum, like a bunch of the ones in the top 20. And literally none of those projects will go down. Not any time in the next year or two anyways. There'll be amalgamations and some will be bought out or taken over, you know, or form partnerships, that sort of thing. So things will morph and change. But I'm just talking about where we were in 2017 versus where we are now in 2022. It's a totally different game. And you have to keep that in mind when you're investing and looking at, hey, you know what, maybe I should have some avalanche, maybe I should be looking at some harmony one, maybe I should be looking at you know, I'm sure you could fill in the blank, Mete. Absolutely, Solana. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's so many. Um, what I love is that unlike uh, the last cycle we went through, we didn't have things to do. Uh, and there's lots of things to do this time. And the investment into these projects, the just the amount of developers, you name it, just the legitimacy of a lot of these projects and sectors it's just so much more mature. I, I actually can't believe, I know people uh, kind of, they get frustrated sometimes with software development, IT or blockchain about how long it takes. But, it, you know, I've been doing this so long. Uh, it's actually, the speed is pretty incredible. And I like what you said about Doge, for example. Um, you know, the truth is, being in this market is just better than not being in it. And the longer you're in this market, the better it is. And um, whatever token you bought, that's a quality token or a token that's going to do well in the future, you really become insulated from the price springs uh, swings pretty quickly. Um, you know, people that bought whatever token, you know, a 30 or 40% drop or whatever gain on whatever day, it doesn't really matter. You bought that thing so cheap, you're just insulated from a lot of those, a lot of those, a lot of those mechanisms of up and ups and downs. So I hope if you're new to this space, I hope people can kind of wrap their mind around that concept because the longer you're in, you'll experience it. Sam, let's go ahead and get into the questions here. Uh, we have the top one with 24 votes. It says, hey, Sam and Moo, will we see VeChain Vet run to 50 cents this year in 2022? I was going to say, um, that's a great question, Matthias. Yes, absolutely. I would say that um, VeChain, along with many others, are going to hit new all-time highs. So Vet should, at a minimum revisit its all-time high it probably by april and that was what 28 cents like that was a really hard run that it took all you know all of a sudden yeah um so i would have to say that uh, by the end of the year 50 cents is not going to be a really hard one to take the the thing is though is that when it goes to um 
you know, 28 cents, a lot of people will be, will be passed like even 100 times what they paid for V chain. Right. So my question is, you know, are you going to take some profits when it goes over 25 cents now that you're 100 times what you were invested, even though it's probably going to go to 50 cents, but you know, we're still 2022 is still going to have like the mother of all pullbacks. IE, It'll run to like three and a half trillion and then pull back to 2.8 trillion. I mean, it's just yep. going to be, you know, unbelievable. Uh, what do they call it? Like the bull whip. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Whipsaw. Yep, absolutely. 100%. Uh, let me stop sharing here. We'll go on to this next question. Pizza says, uh, will we see XYO run to 50 cents this year in 2022? So I think for XYO, um, are we not coming up on our one year anniversary of buying it? Yeah, that's about right. It's been yeah. about a year. Yep. Yeah. And I had said that XYO that you should hang in there for about two years. And actually, I'll be 100 times at 50 cents. So I would say by like April of 2023, you should get to your 100 times before then with XYO. But again, that, that's the thing about this, this bullwhip market that we're in. I would also like to point out that you don't know which cryptos are going to run. I mean, you know, Ethereum was the darling last year doing its uh, huge run of 10 times easily. Yep. Um, and, you know, Cardano is probably going to be the darling for this run. Uh, David Jones says, hey, Sam and Mu, a year or two from now, which projects do you see as Ethereum's largest competitor? Thanks, guys. Well, Cardano would be one. And I know a lot of people would be like, oh, well, how can they be a competitor to Ethereum? It's like, well, to me, people who are, what it means to me when people are looking at the crypto market is that odds are they're not a blockchain developer. They're just someone like me who comes from like a different, I mean, I came from finance, but a person could have been a, a carpenter or, you know, or own a restaurant or, you know, and is looking at the crypto market and thinking, okay, I missed Ethereum. I didn't get it at $120 or even at $400 or even at $1,200, right? And I got all this money here. Okay, I'm going to put 25% in Ethereum still. Because the Ethereum is kind of like the, what the Bitcoin was a few years ago, Absolutely. right? You, like, you take a percentage, you put it in that one. Um, but what else could you spread it around? Well, you know, the ones that have not grown, who they've grown quite a bit, but their upside is pretty significant still, because again, it is early days, You and you are taking a higher risk, and that's why you're paying $1.16 for Cardano, because it is higher risk. So if you're willing to do something that's higher risk, and it's going to have a much higher reward, because you know if it does run to $10, um, let's say in April, it runs to $10. You know, a lot of people who have full bags, now you got a million bucks, right? You took, you, you had like, you put 7,000 in mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. and now it's like a million dollars. So you're taking a much higher, much higher risk when you're buying stuff like Cardano. Um, Polkadot is uh, very well developed. It's, um, it's actually, it was one of the top holdings on that survey that we were looking at across the board as to what people held in their portfolio. So Polkadot was the top one, which that surprised me actually. Um, so that's another really good one that I would say would be, I guess if you could call it a competitor to Ethereum, which they're not really because they're just completely different than Ethereum. But I'm, I'm assuming that David Jones is not a blockchain developer and is asking from you know, an investment point of view, what are other cryptos that I can invest in and, and get in what, which ones are like in Ethereum early days right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, uh, David Jones, I, you know, I, I like to see chains that do are doing something. Um, I need these, these are networks and I don't view blockchain networks any different than I view other kinds of IT networks. And the more apps, dApps, users, uh, financial activity, I could go on and on. Uh, the more of those things on those networks or chains, that's when I get excited. So, man, I could easily envision Avalanche, Solana, um, potentially Terra, um, you know, being an Ethereum competitor in the future. Um, there's just lots of stuff to do there, and there's lots of stuff to do there more and more all the time. Um, 
I, I also looking at the total value locked up inside these mechanisms, I think is really stark. I think it's I think it's really eye opening when people are thinking about what chains are doing what. You know, if we take a look at the entire um, total value locked across these DeFi platforms, for example, uh, and DeFi is just a subset. It's just a sector of what these networks do. But if we take a look, it's 215 billion. When Sam and I first started talking about DeFi sector, do you remember Sam? It was like, it was like 500,000, uh, yeah. you know, 1 million. Um, so we're, we're a long ways from that now. And this is great. This is just growth of a, of a sector industry and technology, but you know, with the total being 215, Ethereum is, is that's how dominant Ethereum is. It's over half of all the total value lock is, is wrapped up in this network. Um, so yeah, those are a couple that I threw out that I, I really like. Uh, those are, are my favorite level one, uh, layer ones. So, so there you go. Other yeah. than Ethereum. And, and I did take, um, some of my Ethereum and that's what I, I think that's what I bought my avalanche with, because I did have in yep. mind that avalanche was, you know, it was Ethereum at $60 in my mind when I was Absolutely. getting it. And I mean, Ethereum yep. was down at that time. I think wasn't Ethereum like around 2,500 or something. So you have Probably. to be mindful about that too, that Ethereum's at 3,100. So, you know, um, Avalanche, I have, I made a slight advantage over that where it's at $83 now. Exactly. But, um, yeah, we, I caught earlier in the week where, um, where Aval the price of Avalanche um, surpassed Solana. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Avalanche, I'm, I'm so excited about Avalanche. Uh, there's just so many things to do there. You know, Cosmos Atom is another one, but it, it doesn't seem to have the user base, right? I, I don't think people are, and it's not as easily and functional kind of uh, for new users to play with, right? Where Avalanche is pretty easy. Solana is pretty easy. Um, so that's something to keep in mind too. But yeah, I, I'm super stoked about Avalanche. Let's just go take a look at Solana uh, as well. Um, you know, when you get into the tokenomics, Solana has some, some amazing tokenomics actually. Um, so, you know, if you're kind of a, an economic space person that looks at tokenomics and you even outside of the technology apps, apps, users are funding, um, you know, Solana would be one that you're, that you're interested in, uh, just as you may be interested in Ethereum for some of those same reasons, but let's just go take a look at Solana. It's, it's having a really good day today. Uh, it's just poking up at uh, 102, but I, you know, we try and talk like this and you and I have really talked like this from the beginning, Sam, um, where I think others have not, we need all these things. We want all these things. We want all these good things. Uh, we want all these networks. We want more users. We want more apps and apps. We want more sectors. Like we want it all. Um, no, no one chain's going to rule them all. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm happy when, uh, people like, I hear about people like Michael Soller, you know, committing to Bitcoin and putting it on his yeah. balance sheet. And then other people who own companies end up doing it. And all I hope is that, that he does what, you know, most of us who have gotten into the space do and that is we look around and say okay there's more than bitcoin and then you discover ethereum and then you discover cardano and avalanche and polka dot and you know all these other wonderful chain link i mean that talk exactly. about uh, a, a sleeping giant i mean Absolutely. that's going to be amazing when that goes this year and i mean i'm, I'm happy to have it at two dollars and 25 cents and i've never sold any of it and exactly. you know and and so i've had to watch some of this stuff go to highs and then pull back but you know what? Like I said, I put up with that with other cryptos as well, and I'm in it to win it. I see the long-term story. I feel bad for people who get all depressed and upset because maybe their portfolio is like at 1.4 million, and then now it's down to 600,000, and then they're like, oh, I should have cashed it. It's like, yeah, but if you're like me, and you see your portfolio at like 14 million, <laughs> right? right? And it's sort of like, well, which crypto should I hold on to? Which one should I sell? And it's like, ah, oh, you know what? The people on the other side, they don't really work that way. They, they're they more, I guess you, I'd use the word macro. They're mm -hmm. on, up onto, you know, the big picture. And, uh, you know, right now we just have to survive 2022. Because I would say that out of all the years, this will probably be the hardest on people's heads, just where the pullbacks compared to like the highs and the lows, the, the division between it is going to be so huge. And you just got to be mentally prepared for it. And I think that, you know, with most personalities in the room, they would agree that, yeah, you know what, I should have taken a little bit of profits back when it was running so hot because 
you know, I was already well over a hundred times my investment and I didn't take anything at all. And then I was feeling like it was a bit of a dud where I had to sit here for six months to a year and all of this stuff I could have bought, all of this stuff I could have invested in, all these other opportunities that came up that I didn't take advantage of because I wasn't following the rules. And, you know, hey, listen, I've met people who were like, I don't care. I'm holding on to till the market's 100 trillion. I'm not selling anything at all. But those people don't have any regrets. They don't even think about it, right, at no. all. So, so just measure what kind of personality you are. Know yourself. And that's one way to really survive this market is to make sure that when you're up, you know, even um, when you make like a quick 20 or 30 times on a coin, I mean, if you wanted to sell half of it, there's nothing wrong with that because exactly. that's better than following it all the way down again. At least you can say, oh, I sold half of it at the top and now I'm going to go in and buy it all back cheaper. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't try to do that because... I'm not into trading and even the long-term stuff when I get, when I cash out, I'm cashing out. Like the money's going to leave the crypto market and go into something else. Right. But sometimes you just got to make that move and press the button on something that you've been holding on to for two or three years. And then you're just about to take the money out of the market to maybe get something in hard assets, but then a really great opportunity comes along and you're distracted by that. And then you admit that you're a degen. <laughs> I love it, Sam. Yeah, lots of strategies. I hope people actually, I hope people know themselves, just like you're saying, understand their personality. There's lots of free personality tests out there. Um, my brother's a psychologist. I, I will tell you, the better you know yourself and know your trappings and your um, your proclivities as far as personality, it will inform you how you view this market. And uh, I hope people are just sticking to their goals, trying to achieve their goals one, one at a time. There's so many strategies. It's just so individual. Um, Growing Crypto says, hey, Sam and Moo, which will run first between Matic, Dot, ADA, Tezos, Doge, Link, Vet, XLM, Atlas, or AMP? Chase, you know, we're about to head into uh, an epic time where all of the above are going to run. Um, if I had to say which one would run the most out of all of them, I'm going to guess that it's going to be ADA and Doge for right now. But then, of course, it's going to be followed by Link. Um, you know, AMP is finally going to make a move. Matic is going to revisit its all-time high. Um, DOT is going to find a lot of interest as well. But again, you know, the question is which one will run first? So I feel like ADA and Doge will run like five minutes ahead of everybody else. There you go. Benina's got a question here. If I manage to sell a part of my crypto just before the next big crypto crash and I can't immediately reinvest in a property, where would my money be safe? In the bank, in USDC, or somewhere else? Mm. So if you sell part of your crypto and just before the next big crypto crash... Yeah, see, I, I thought she was going to say something along the lines like why I was thinking when I was saying just before about, you know, you're about ready to leave the market sure. with that money and sure. then there's a big crash and you're like looking, you know, and you're like, because the, the degen part of me, uh, Benita, would just say, yeah, um, just buy back some of those cryptos that you sold. <laughs> It'd be nice and safe in there because you're buying on the bottom. But I know that's not what she's asking. Maybe she's right. not a degen like most of us here. So um, so she can't immediately reinvest in a property. She wants to know where it's going to be safe. So other than in a hole in your backyard, um, probably in some gold and silver um, or some USDC, um, I try not to keep like large sums of money in the bank because they like to do these bail-ins. And they also, I find that once these institutions get a hold of your money, then they can really do whatever they want in order to try to get you to get your money out. I mean, it, it, they only do it to me once and then I'm finished with them. It's like, yeah, you're right. only going to do that to me one time, right? Right. Absolutely. You. <laughs> You'll just I do it agree. once and then that'll be it. <laughs> but yeah, I would say USDC. And I, I don't know if this is really pertinent to kind of the scenario you're painting, uh, Benita, but you know, there's, there's a lot of interesting, uh, mechanisms out there more and more all the time. I saw a wonderful write up in Forbes about crypto mortgages where people can take <clears throat> a mortgage out 100% uh, backed uh, without actually selling the crypto, not incurring the tax hit, things like this. I don't know if these are, you know, app 
applicable to you, but, you know, go out, you're going to have to go get signed up for these things. You know, Milo credit, we've talked about this one before. Um, it's pretty interesting. Lots of live streams around this, um, you know, over on psychic nerds, uh, hold on one minute. We were talking about one this morning, uh, figure.com. This one got a huge write up and I believe, um, Forbes. Um, but this is another one, extremely interesting. Um, so, you know, maybe look into some of these, but <clears throat> a lot of these are basically getting on a whitelist and beginning the process. And as you can imagine, there's many, 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 many people interested in doing something like this. So be early, go get signed up, get used to these mechanisms and see if maybe it's, it's for you, Benita. Yeah. So is that just, um, is it in the United States and Canada? Like where, where will Milo finance the, the mortgage for the home? Obviously they're not going to finance a mortgage for a home in Ukraine or Belarus right now. Yeah. So Milo's based out of uh, Miami, Florida. You'll mm -hmm. notice that a lot of these uh, crypto backed, all sorts of things are, ba ba are, are located in kind of crypto friendly areas, Houston, Texas, um, you know, Denver, Colorado, um wyoming uh miami i could go on and on um i don't know if they service loans throughout the uh the world but i know in other countries um and i can pull up some news articles this is becoming actually the banks custodying crypto and using it as collateral for all sorts of things including loans outside of the united states uh especially europe germany other places seems to be becoming super normal so um from what I'm reading now, we have members all over the place. Maybe that's not the case, but it looks like that's it's. I mean, Switzerland. I could go on and on. It, it looks like this is really taking hold, and this is a mechanism. Um, so, I hope that helps. Um, I can't think of any right off the bat, um, but yeah, I think Milo is specifically the United States. I think it is. Okay. No, just good to know because mm -hmm. you know somebody's uh, outside of the U.S. We have a lot of people in Australia. True. We have people following us in. Uh, you're at about 8% are in Canada. So it's always good to know like what is uh, for one particular area, but let's face it. I mean, if they're doing it in the United States, it's just a matter of time before they start expanding to other, probably West, more likely Western English speaking countries right for right now. Yeah, yeah for sure. Absolutely. Uh, next question here is from Limit Break. Do you see Crypto.com's CRO token uh, reaching the price levels of Binance's BNB token? As the former seems to be taking more steps towards compliance than the latter and looks to be the premier exchange for Western countries. Uh, uh, let me just chime in first, Limit Break. I think it, it, the BNB token is the, I don't think you could equate the two in price in my opinion. Um, there's so much functionality and smart layer functionality inside the BNB token that I don't believe the CRO token or its network has that sort of functionality yet. So I feel like <clears throat> the token supplies are completely different. There's lots of things that are completely different about them. It looks like you're only referencing the exchange or exchange function or the size of the exchange. Sam, your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. I, I think that Binance has a little bit of something extra going on and, um, yeah, and definitely crypto.com is trying to go like sort of the way of Gemini by being, you know, very compliant. They they apply first and then they start doing business, right? Whereas Binance just did business with people. So yeah, that turned out to be a little bit of a problem for them. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't, and there's, a, I, I wouldn't buy like the crypto.com CRO token because I felt like it was going to be like the BNB token, I would probably be looking at other stuff right now that has a higher potential. Like one of the, I mean, that would be the CRO to token would be more of a blue chip where it belongs to the exchanges. I'm not the same as a stable token, of course, you know, as far as not going up or down and maintaining its value, but they're looking at, some, you know, like, can, do they have a chance to get in on something and then get a really good multiple on it. I would say that there's other stuff out there that, you know, crypto.com holds on to. Like I was looking at uh, the VVS finance because that was something that they supported and will drive people towards, right? Especially right. with DeFi and the financing. So I felt like, you know, because crypto.com is becoming 
more so the go-to for um, investing your cryptos when the herd arrives they'll take advantage of that and they'll be they'll be sort of coordinating to get people to use like stuff that they have such as the vvs finance so that was my information on that as far as crypto.com goes thanks sam appreciate that uh this next one hey sam and moo do you still see a 10x for april may and another 10x by the end of the year or have the timetables shifted to the end of 22 and April of next year? Thanks. Well, people ask me stuff like about timetables shifting. And so timetables, they don't shift. What happens is that I don't translate properly. And we had that talk last night on Rudy's Psychic Meetup where 100%. Um, people were talking about, you know, some things about, oh, you know, because of free choice. And I was talking about, well, I think that that's just an excuse that a lot of um, fraudulent people out there who've taken your money and absolutely, absolutely zero, nothing comes true. Like they weren't bang on about anything at all. So it was no different than just having a talk with a friend, except you paid them like 150 bucks or something, right? right. So, you know, but when nothing comes true and they just look at you and go, oh, well, they, well, you have free choice, you know? It's just like, it's such a scammer's response, you know, right, <laughs> blaming right. it on the individual. And I tell every, I told everyone up front, listen, if I didn't do a good job, like, or if you didn't get information from me that came true in the future, then that was my fault. It wasn't timetable shifting or anything like that. And I, as we approach April, you know, I get that feeling. I, I see it happening. I see that what I said about, you know, that the stock markets would go down, but that cryptos would correct back, like it get, would get pulled down, but cryptos would come back on its own, regardless of what the stock markets did. And we're starting to see that now where a lot of these um, angel investors and investment companies, they're not looking at whether or not they should be buying Amazon or Google or getting involved in, you know, Subway, let's say buying Burger King or whatever the, the thing is, the new thing that they want to get involved in where they'll make money. Now, cryptos, cryptos, cryptos. That's right. what they want. So that's what I'm seeing line up. So yeah, April, May, everybody should be about 10 times. I mean, there are some things that are going to go more than that, 20 times. And those will be the ones like, for example, if Cardano surprisingly ran to $25, I mean, that would just be blowing everybody. Everybody's mind would just be blowing if it went, right. you know, 25 times. And the good thing about the timing would be that it wouldn't be sucking it up from other markets. Because, you know, when people were buying Solana, they're getting Avalanche, they're buying all of these other like newer upcoming um, chains, they are or layers, they are taking from their Polkadot, their Cardano, they're, they're using their Ethereum to buy this stuff. It's all the money's just sloshing around all within the same, you know, metaverse and cryptos, right? But what happens right. is when this new money comes in and I and I'm feeling it for April, May, and then, you know, the 10 times by the end of the year, that could be like a gradual increase, like not an all of a sudden, oh, in October it's going to go another 10 times. It would be like just a gradual, you know, or it could lead into April of um 2023. I think that a lot of it has to do with where things go with um, the war in the Ukraine and how badly the um, stock markets are hammered by what is coming for the world. Because, you know, we we haven't seen near what's going to happen as a result of locking down the population for two years. I mean, 100%. there's still lots of butt kicking that, you know, let, let's just say the North Americans and the Europeans and all the people who just locked down their entire societies, they're going to be getting their pampered butts kicked pretty soon. And the politicians are going to be in trouble with their local people. So that all depends on what happens there. But the, the other thing too is remember that, the worse the world gets, the more the money is going to flow into gold, silver, cryptos. So let's watch that gold and see how long it takes for that gold to be over two thousand dollars for two, at least two weeks, and then we're, we're going to we'll know that it's going to be game on for the cryptos. Yeah, boy, talking about things or offering things or legacy, understanding what people want. I, you know, I'm hearing immense pressure on things. Uh, banking customers, financial institutions, the customers are clamoring. Uh, for uh, cryptos or crypto funds or some sort of way to get in, especially with old legacy money. 
um, you know, let's just take a look at this. I, I just wanted to circle back to this figure technologies, this crypto back uh, mortgage. You know, when you look at the the amount, three point two billion valuation, Sam, and it's you know it's Morgan Creek coming in here and it's others. I'll leave that there, but kind of where I wanted to go was BlackRock. And listen, I'm not a I'm not a Larry Fink fan, and I'm not a BlackRock fan by any means, but um, they are they are being squeezed here because they are be, be, being put in, under a lot of pressure by institutions and people to be able to offer some of these products. So they're doing all sorts of things and getting things ready. Um, so they're going to offer crypto services to client uh, uh, to clients. Where was the other one here? Oh, Ray Dalio. I'm sure you heard about this, Sam. You know how much money that's uh, under his management, um, Bridgewater. And uh, yes. they're doing yeah. it. He was yeah. originally a naysayer for cryptocurrency. Yep. yep. And it's just amazing. It's just amazing what's coming. It's amazing where we're at. And it's amazing what the future is going to hold. This is just it's just incredible. I mean, we are not talking about when you're talking about a um, a Bridgewater, or you're talking about a BlackRock, you're not talking about tiny family office like you're talking about mammoth. Um, you know, these these things are huge. They're huge. Um, I'm just super excited. Um, Sam, what do you think about that? Like, how fast do we go from I, I, gosh, I'm going to have to take another diversion, but uh, a diverted path. But, you know, like the other day I was listening to Bankless. They were talking uh, to several uh, DeFi projects um, and I could name them, but I won't about, uh, you know, it was like DeFi down under. I think that's what they named the show. And you guys would all know the products and the people talking. Uh, if you're paying attention to crypto market, very interesting. I was surprised at what they all said. They actually said in Australia, they're getting a lot of support. They're getting a ton of support. Sam, uh, how do you feel about that? Like uh, just how it seems so different in different places of the world, but why would, wonder why they hold that view that uh, the Australian government is actually, they feel is being extremely supportive and letting them develop and create things. Right. Well, I think that there's a much larger percentage of people who hold cryptos in Australia um, and there's also a large, there's also, I think, a, as per, far as percentage goes, I think in Canada, that there's a large percentage of people like larger than the United States who actually hold uh, cryptos. I know for internet access way back when they started tracking that, that there were more Canadian households, for example, with access to high speed internet than American households, as far as percentage of the population goes. So, um, I feel like, you know, places like Canada that managed to scoop the Bitcoin exchange, the Bitcoin ETFs were approved, yeah. you know, and yeah. Australia approved them as well. And, you know, Europe seems to be getting on board with that. And the only reason America is dragging their feet is because, unfortunately, America, I noticed that America has a large percentage of people in the plus 70 age group. And I think that a lot of people who are like 80, 85 years old, they don't, um, they don't understand the new technology and they're afraid of it. And they're looking at how, oh, wow, you can leave the country with that. There's no way that we can tax it. I mean, they just sort of lead with their foot that everybody's a criminal, right? Right. So, yeah. It's like, well, yeah. you know, the time has come that, you know, you should probably get rid of income tax completely and then just charge tax on the purchases of everything. And then that way there it's one and done and you don't have this unfair system of, you know, criminals who work under the table and manage to hide a portion of their income from the government um, and pay significantly less towards, um, you know, running the country with their, their share of income tax compared to like the non-criminal element who just, you know, they just pay it. Um, if you're basing it on purchases in a country, you know, when you buy your groceries, there's a tax on that. When you buy a car, there's a tax on that. When you buy a house, there's a tax on that. Exactly. You know, and it's like instead of income tax, instead of like giving away 20, 40, 60, $80,000 a year in income, federal and provincial or federal and state taxes, then you just pay like this flat tax on everything that you buy. And that would be a way to fix it and to fix this paranoia about people, you know, leaving the country with all of their cryptos in, you know, the seed words some delivered somewhere and people can cross the border and only have a few bucks in their wallet, but actually have 20 or $30 million. Absolutely. Access. 
isn't it a wonderful thing? We've never been here in history before where people could basically memorize 12, 18 or 24 words and basically uh, <laughs> just take everything with them. Not everything, but, you know, it's it's wonderful. Uh, wow. Just a uh, cool times to be alive. Uh, Digital assets. Jared says, hey, Sam and Moo, will we see reef hit 50 cents to a dollar this year? Thanks for all you do. Will we see reef hit 50 cents to a dollar? Um, I would say like that reef should be at least over 20 cents this year. I mean, it is one of my 100 times coins and I've been holding it. I'm coming up on to, um, it'll be this January. It'll be two years. I think I'm pretty sure unless it was no, maybe it was January of 2020. So we're already past the two years and reef was like a two to four year bet. So I'm going to say um, Reef probably more like a 2023 cash in date. But again, you know, if you want any, you better get it now because everything is going up a lot, like a lot. Thanks, Sam. Um, William Penn says, will we see sports teams and players getting paid in crypto uh, or we see sports teams and players getting paid in crypto? Will that become a trend in all industries? Um, yes, I think that it will, especially... Um, the football player who asked for part of his pay to be in Solana, he did extremely well with that. And that is the talk of the town. Absolutely. 100%. And if you work in blockchain, that's just pretty normal anyway, that you're paid in crypto. Uh, Oya says, Thailand has just banned Bitcoin and crypto payments. What implications do you see as a result for Thai uh, and outside of the country? Well, I'm sure Thailand has their reasons, um, you know, probably because the corrupt government, I'm going to assume the government is corrupt in Thailand, and that's why they banned Bitcoin and crypto payments, because corrupt governments, they don't like that. They don't like that the people have the control. But again, Thailand will have to come on board because it needs Western money. And as Western com countries adopt cryptocurrencies, um, you know, just like, you know, Thailand accepts American dollars. You know, you can give someone an American dollar in Thailand and they'll accept it because it has value, right? So they can ban it all they want, but they're such a small country that they will have to, they will have to come on board for the reason of, for survival. Um, India did not ban cryptocurrencies like they said they were going to because it wasn't about a survival thing because India would have survived no matter what. They're such a huge right. country and they have, you know, so much you know technology and um intellect and organizational skills and a lot of things going for them so they got on board with cryptos because they would have lost out as a society and a culture and the american canadian australian european like all of the societies um central america south america all of these societies that were are adopting blockchain they will get ahead and the countries that don't adopt blockchain, they will fall behind. And so Thailand will start to see that and they will overcome. Because I mean, the, like I said, the, the reason they're doing that is because of the corruption. And one of the beauties of um, blockchain technology is that it gives corruption at, at government levels, the heave ho boot. 100%. I love that. Thank you, Sam. Um, you know, it's really interesting. I mean, I you know, like you said, a lot of countries have attempted to make disparaging comments against crypto or ask their citizens not to do it or make it illegal in one way, shape or form, whatever. Um, it hasn't stopped crypto and it's not going to stop crypto. And Thailand is a very tiny country. I'm more excited about what Honduras is doing. It looks like Honduras is about to make Bitcoin their legal tender. This is wonderful. I'm excited that uh, El Salvador put forward that $1 billion Bitcoin bond and it's already 50% oversubscribed to the point where they had to ask people to, to not be interested in it, right? This is the future. This is great. This is wonderful. I think just spend more time and worry about more time, uh, you know, your thoughts about where this is going, where it is and where it's going and less on, uh, you know, countries, individuals, lawmakers, you name it, dragging their feet. Um, we're moving ahead. It's obvious we're moving ahead. Um, Arcane Voodoo says, even though crypto.com is not in the U.S., how well do you see their DeFi protocol VVS Finance doing backed? Uh, by their own CRO token, and now with their new yield-bearing governance token, XV. 
BVS launching tomorrow, 325. Oh, well, that's great news for um, XVVS. I didn't even know about that, that it was going to be launching tomorrow. Um, I do feel like they're going to be... Uh, so crypto.com's not in the US. No, they're based out of Hong Kong. Oh, yeah. They did I buy the they Staples were... Center. But, but, but they're yeah. licensed in the US though. Um, we don't, in the United States, we don't have access to their full set of, oh. of things, even from an exchange perspective. Oh, okay. uh, but, uh, but yeah. Well, I feel like that you will. I feel like that's all going to change. This is all going to change when the regulations come out. And I feel like the regulations are going to come out really soon for the US. And that may be, you know, um, probably the big run in April will be as a result of, you know, maybe some word getting out as to what is going to happen with regulations. Because you'll know no news will come out and then all of a sudden the market will start going bonkers and you'll be like, oh yeah, all of the frontline people who are in the know, who have friends in the government that are, because people, you know, it's just human nature to get on the phone to your friends and tell them. You know, yeah. even though you would get in trouble and potentially sure. get jail time, people sure. still sure. tell on them. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Chris has got one here. It's pretty expansive. I don't know how you want to break up this question, but it says, hey, Sam and Moo, if you had no cryptos whatsoever, but you had 60 grand uh, in USD, what 10 different coins would you buy with that 60 grand? Thank you. Well, that's a very good question um, and very timely for the market that we're in. Um, what we should do maybe, Muant, is I'll give my list of my 10 and the breakdown. So if somebody had like no cryptos at all, I would say, okay, look, put 25% in Ethereum right off of the bat. You know, make sure that you've got your Ethereum because not only do you have your invest a big portion of your investment in sort of a sure thing. And I expect Ethereum to go to $12,000 very quickly, like probably um, if not um, in the next couple of months before the end of the year, I expect to see it. So that's like an easy, almost four times your money right now in Ethereum. So if you had 25% of that in, that's 15,000, that would turn to $60,000, you know, by the end of the year. Um, I would buy, um, the other ones I would buy would be Cardano. I would get some Avalanche, Polkadot, Dogecoin, Polygon. Um, I'd get some Near and Chainlink. Um, and, oh, definitely I would get some VeChain because that's still at like, it's up 20%, but it's still under six cents. So that, and I would get some Phantom as well and Tezos. So that would be my breakdown. I would just go down the list and say, okay, put 25% into Ethereum and then take the other 75% and just randomly divide it between all of these different cryptos. Um, and if you have, if you have to choose another one, I would say like the graph is still, I mean, it's down 5% this week, but that's because it was up like a crazy percent the week before. Right. So that I, if I had no cryptos, that's what I would do. A lot of people would be like, oh, well, you know, what about, what about Star Atlas? You know, what about Gala? And I'd be like, yeah, but I have cryptos and I bought those knowing full well that I had all these other things. Right. So mm -hmm. I don't lead with, I don't lead with the high risk stuff first. You know, I would go right. with the. And the question was basically something that had zero cryptos, yeah. right? So, yeah. you know, moving into more solid, stable projects, uh, ones that are already considered blue chips or whatever, uh, ones that have already amazing development, but will have more awesome development in the future. You and I always talk about having these train tracks first before you kind of go into the apps, dApps or further out to the solar system. So a brand new person that would, I mean, I thought the list was great. Might swap out a few of those in there for maybe a Solana. What would be another one? Um, uh, I mean, the, the the ones you came up with are great. They're 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 solid. Uh, personally, I'm a technologist, so I lean towards more technology, more layer ones, more layer twos. Um, so maybe Meta uh, needs to be in there as well, something like that. But uh, I love the list you came up with. Solid, solid list. And I'm glad you kind of gave the ideas about why you wouldn't want to get into maybe some of these other tokens further and further out. Um, 
because we want people to have a good base. We want people to have a really good solid base. If this is their first purchase of crypto, right? We want that to have a very nice solid base. Thanks. Oh yeah, like we'll probably still be running our gala nodes when we're cashing in profits from some of the legacy coins. Heck yeah, one hundred percent. Um, Brad VJ says, um, Hey, Sam and Moo, do you see any particular stable coin becoming the dominant stable coin, a future USD digital currency, USDC, USDT tether, or Binance, uh, USD, et cetera. Uh, USDC. That was one like a while ago I thought was the standout. And then it ended up being used, ended up using, I think stellar as well, which was kind of cool. Uh, but the future, do you see, do you see any, do you see USDC still being the dominant one there, Sam? Yeah. Okay. Um, it, central bank digital currencies are coming. They're rolling them out at light speed in China. Um, it's kind of scary how fast they're being rolled out. Um, people will be pushed there. I think everybody understands that it's just going to be a digital flavor of the junk they have now when it comes to fiat. Um, all these central bank digital currencies won't be able to do. It won't be as awesome as the ones that we're always talking about. I do see this Terra USD because it will actually be physically backed by Bitcoin as being a big deal. If we get a could, if we could get a real tether backed by actual something, or we could get a real USDC uh, where the audits were exactly 100% backed, then I may be more interested in them. USDC is not going to fail. <clears throat> They're not going to fail because Circle and JP Morgan created it. It's just that simple. So, but I'm really excited about this USD uh, Terra. I think it's interesting. I would like to see more of these things actually backed um, and be able to be fully audited. Uh, so I guess, Sam, I'll just ask you that. Uh, how do you see uh, USD Terra doing? Um, I didn't have any information on that one that was did you say they just developed it uh no it's 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 i mean it's 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 already being rolled out uh but you're talking about 10 billion dollars of backing through bitcoin right so right right so this is like a, a, a like usdc but it's for bitcoin no it's it's for the entire crypto market but the, actually what they're holding in reserve what they're actually holding in reserve is bitcoin <clears throat> uh. not not some made up amount of fiat in some mystery bank in in panama uh but actual you know it's going you know what i'm saying it's it's physically backed uh it's backed by bitcoin i think in the short term that it will be um but not in the long term okay um so let's let's go ahead back to the discussion then. Uh, do you feel that some of these stable coins are not backed one to one with what they say they are or have issued? I think like Tether has some problems. Yeah, for sure. Uh, East West says thoughts on SNX and any price predictions for 2022. Um, synthetics. Uh, didn't that just go on a big, huge run? It's really been doing great. It's had several jumps since the beginning of the year when the rest of the market was getting smashed, but that's pretty much the case for synthetics. Synthetics is always one that gets up off the canvas quicker than the rest of them. Right on. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't really have a price prediction for synthetics like at this point. Thanks, Sam. Uh, H Stan says, now that you've seen, uh, we've seen Dino coins and DeFi start to wake up. Curious what you think the next major trend might be. More layer one gains, gaming and NFT metaverse, uh, Doge and the meme coins, et cetera, or something else. Thanks. Um, well, NFTs will continue to get bigger and bigger, uh, but that's just going to draw people into like the general crypto market. So, you know, then all the coins be popping. Thanks, Sam. Uh, True Seeker says, besides XRP and XLM, which of the cryptos the Sam Jammers hold are backed by precious metals? Um, XRP and XLM are not backed by precious metals. So I'm not sure what you mean. Besides yeah. Yeah. So I think that Truth Seeker, that um, I'm not, I think that maybe you're reading. And this is just based on some other questions that you have. I think that maybe you're reading some other like false information articles and then 
when you come here and you ask the question and you're sort of like, oh, you know, this is the way that it is because this person over here on this other channel or who has this like publication, um, they're saying this, right? But it's just, it's not the truth at all. Um, and no, there's no um, cryptocurrencies that are really backed by precious metals. I know there was one that I, I think I got some of the peeps to get out of a long time ago. I don't know if you remember or not. There was one that these scammers Oh, started yeah. and they said that it was going to be backed by gold and then they managed to they tried to elicit more money from people by saying they were they made up some excuse or whatever but you had to put more money in to buy this other coin that was backed by and this one would really be backed by gold and i was like you know if any it's the same old scam you know give us some more money to save the money that we've already stolen from you kind of mentality and there's people who fall for that as well so um, if you have anybody telling you that XRP or XLM is backed by gold or any crypto um, for that matter is backed by gold, um, don't believe it. If you don't, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if they show me this closet full of gold bullion that they right. have bought with that crypto. Right. I'm going to call BS on it. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. If anything silver or gold, I don't own any paper in silver or gold. Um, the only thing that I would consider owning in paper and silver and gold would be rights to um, mining. Those would be the only things that I would hold in paper. So thanks for that question, Truth Seeker. Obviously, if you're asking that question, there's maybe some other people in our group who have been reading that misinformation. And you know me, I'm always happy to straighten things out. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll just leave the questions there. There's a few things I could say. I don't think it would be helpful. Um, Solar Dragon says, Hey, Sam and Moo, Juno is a layer one smart contract platform with 50 plus apps and 2000 plus DAOs built on it and 108% APR staking. Do you like it and see it being successful? Thank you. Much love. Okay. So let me just bring up Juno first. I'm just going to run it first and then I'll show my screen. So that's number 84 on the list. I hadn't actually um, heard of Juno. I, I, maybe I did hear about it a while ago. I don't know if it's a newer one. Have you heard about it? Yeah. If you're, if you were a Cosmos holder, you got it for free. Uh, you got an airdrop to you for free. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm worried though, because, you know, 50 plus apps, 2000 plus doubts. Listen, I don't know really any, a whole lot of projects on it. Um, and then high APRs like this, you know, it depends on the staking mechanism you're talking about. Do I, do I like this layer one as much as the other layer ones that we always talk about? No, absolutely not. But congrats to holders um, that got airdrops and Juno is all about giving airdrops. So if you do hold Juno, you, you get all sorts of airdrops. But this is the thing, right? Once again, I don't know anybody that wants to use the products that they're being airdropped, right? That's kind of the thing. So I'll just leave it. I'll just leave it there. Well, I think that it is going to um, do well just from plain old brute force, you know, dropping it and then you know, just going on a big marketing campaign. And they're also fair on the total supply versus the circulating supply. Um, it's a little bit thin on the max supply because the max supply is 185 million, um, but the total supply is 75 million and they've already given out 46 million. So at least they're not ruining people on the price, you know, where it can't ever make it past 30 bucks because they would keep unloading it onto the market, um, which would seem into infinity. And then people would leave because they would get fed up watching everybody else's coins go up. But yet for some reason, their coins not going up. And that's only for, I'm only talking about the coins that have, uh, have a circulating supply that is significantly less, like under 20% of what their total supply is. Um, so Juno's doing okay there and, um, and they do have a lot of dApps and apps and they do like to give away the free airdrops. Plus they have 22,000 people who like it. So, I mean, I wouldn't run out and buy Juno right now because I agree with Muant that there are much better layer ones out there right now, um, that you could do like very well with that are a lower risk. 
But again, if you hold Juno right now or you received it as an airdrop and you have a bunch of other cryptos, sure, why not? You know, hold on to it. I'm um, suspicious about a 109% staking. Um, that stuff always ends up just eating itself. So, I mean, just like anything, you know, you can make all the promises you want, but it gets to the point that something turns into a Ponzi scheme, you know, if the return is too high. Because you know what they say, if it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. And a lot of the places that we're offering over 100% returns have either A, rolled it way back or B, it, things have not worked out for them. I'm just going to roll back and clarify some of the statements because if, if like this goes out to YouTube, we'll have a lot of, uh, you know, crypto professors on YouTube tell us how wrong we were. There are some, uh, there are some, um, stable coins uh, that are like a gold tie. The issue is <clears throat> that these things have never been fully, uh, what's the word, Sam, audited, and they're not extremely transparent. Now, Pax Gold is probably the closest one that's made the most effort to, to have those audits and show that what they're offering in stable is what they have. Um, but I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. I don't use it. Uh, like Sam said, if I want to go to gold, I go to gold. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to, there's a lot of things that claim to be one-to-one -one backed or this is backed, but a lot of the auditing, auditing is just not there, not comfortable enough for me. And I know if gold goes to an astronomical, uh, price, right. That I, I would, I might have an issue. There's different ways I can have gold. At least I can apply pressure to get it. Um, physical delivery. I mean, so I just wanted to throw that out there cause I can just hear people like, uh, wanting to say something about it. So let me show the other one. Uh, the other one is uh, XAUT. Um, but once again, this runs into the same thing. Um, so this is basically gold tether. But, um, you know, anything tether, um, I don't really have 100% faith in so that it's one to one back. So we'll just leave it there. I just wanted to go back and just kind of talk about that, Sam. I noticed somebody mentioned PAX over in the side. Um, Hotel Queen says, uh, it seems that Ethereum Classic is setting up for, for a run similar to last spring. Do you have a target price or start or start to peel price in mind when we sell? Do you have a suggestion as to which coins to flip into, or would you throw it into USD and wait for a pullback? The high last spring was 175. I'm not sure if it's prudent to wait out that kind of gain. I don't want to end up in a woulda, coulda, shoulda club again. So um, I don't hold Ethereum Classic, and it's not one that I've ever held. All right. So um, I don't have a whole lot of information on Ethereum Classic. Um, the main thing is that I, um, so I would, if I were you, Hoddle Queen, if I held Ethereum Classic right now, I agree with you that you know, for the sake of it going four times, I wouldn't hold it. I would probably sell all my Ethereum Classic and buy something like uh, regular Ethereum, or I would buy um, Cardano or get one of the other layer ones. Like if you don't hold any Avalanche or Solana or any of those yet, I would That's get I some do. of those. Yeah, don't be part of the woulda, shoulda, coulda club. Um, yeah, that's what I have to say about Ethereum Classic. Yeah, perfect. Um and this is just a, this is how to clean. This is just an expression of what we, what we said would happen is we're going to get a dino coin surge. It happens every run. So, you know, hopefully what we're hoping for is this is, is we're seeing a market. We're seeing an indicator of that, which will clue us into kind of where we're at. Um, Joy expanded says, Hey, Sam and Moo, what are your thoughts on Luna? I like Luna. Moo, I know you are a big fan. Okay, cool. Uh, it's one of the few coins I don't have in my portfolio. I wish I did have. We may have missed the easy 100x, but with so many applications in development, about 20% below the all-time high, is it still a good time to get in? Of course, I'm on a three- to five-year plan, so it may be fine. Some people are saying Luda could reach 10 k well, I don't think Luna could reach 10, 10K, so I don't know who's saying that. Uh, any thoughts or blabs? Thank you. Listen, I, I'll go first. There's lots of layer ones I like. If you missed it, if you haven't been involved in, you know, a lot of these layer one rises, it de kind of depends where you're at, your time horizon, how spread out are you anyway? Um, 
do I think Luna is is like magically better than some of the ones other ones we talk about? No, I'd rather be on a network that has lots of things to do. Um, are there really cool things I do like about Luna? Yes, but every I just want everybody to keep it. You can't catch them all. You literally can't catch them all. Like so, I hope I hope just everybody understands that you just can't. Sam, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for something that's going to give you a uh, hundred times, um, Luna is not going to be it. Um, and it would have been nice to have found it back in March of 2020. I mean, I was in the space back then. Why didn't I see it as a psychic medium? Well, like you said, we can't catch them all. And um, that's not what it's about. It's about the macro picture or the big picture with having some 100 times hits. Um, but, you know, if I was to name off everything all in a list in order, and then this one, oh, this one, it, you got... 7,700 times your money. And this one you got, you know, the, right. from the top to bottom, I mean, I, my life wouldn't be safe. It wouldn't be safe for me to go anywhere because, you know, I would be like a little golden goose laying eggs walking around. Somebody would just grab me. Right. So that's why, that's why I can't do that kind of stuff where I look at it and I'm just like, Oh, you know, why didn't, why didn't I see Luna like back in March of 2020 when everything was like, you know, going in the toilet. I mean, even Theta went down to five cents um, back in March of 2020. And I saw that that was still going to be 10 bucks. So as far as um, all that goes, I think that you're looking at, so you have to dig a little bit deeper if you want to find a hundred times coin. Um, could Luna go to a few hundred bucks? Oh yeah, absolutely. It could. 100. Um, yep. You know, so if you want like three to four times, oh yeah, like that's going to be really easy for a lot of people getting into the market. Um, but if you're looking for the hundred times and it going to 10,000, even if you're like, you're gonna be in the market for three to five years, cause see three to five years, Luna might not even be around. Like that's how fast things are gonna move. Like stuff is gonna come and go. Cause I mean, look at the, you should, you know what you should do is you should look at the um, coin market cap from like five years ago. Absolutely. And see what was in five years ago. And there'll be stuff in there like that you don't even recognize. There'll be stuff in there from last year that aren't that aren't around anymore. Or yeah. or two years ago. Um and that's not to beat up this project. I, I like this project. I think it's a quality layer one, like it is. Um I just I, I I'm not buying that ten thousand dollar. Um I like some of the things they do. Do I think it'll be higher than ninety four dollars a year from no, now? Yep, I do. Um, but I don't see it as being a, a $10,000 coin. I just don't. Anmar, how high do you see Alluvium going in the next bull run and which final price do you see? I should circle back. You said on the live last advanced and premium live stream. Thank you. Yeah. So Alluvium, um, again, I don't own it, but I do love it. It was just that I, you can't own everything. Um, and it is at number 182. So um, it is in its earlier days. I like that its total supply is only 7 million with max supply at 10 million. It's but remember, deal. they only have 650,000 in um, circulating supply. Um, what Alluvium has going for it is that it does have 68,000 people who like it. But I'm afraid that with the circulating supply being less than 10% of the total supply and way less than 10% of the max supply, then I, would, I wouldn't think that timing would be good for Alluvium just because it has already gone up 1,963% um, in the last nine months. So it would have been awesome if you had gotten it at $29.23. Um, will it see its all-time high again of $1,911? Oh, absolutely. Um, I do think so. I think a lot. I think pretty much everything that you hold will be at a minimum three times the money, like everything, minimum, three times your money. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited about Alluvium. I've always been excited about Alluvium. Uh, Alluvium was one I was early to. I love um, – uh, Kieran Warwick, brother of Kane Warwick. Kane Warwick uh, does synthetics. Uh, Kieran does uh, Luvium. Um, they have some interesting things there, the economics around the game. I think Alluvium and I think Axie are two of the most misunderstood ecosystems in all of crypto. 
I hear people comment about their price or other things around the projects and they don't understand it's a whole ecosystem. You know, I, when I hear people talk about what, for example, Axie is, they don't understand the sponsorship there. They don't understand the amount of people playing the game. They don't understand the, the amount of investment. They don't understand that it's a, it's a mechanism where any new game could be plugged into their ecosystem. That's a big deal. So, you, you know, Axie's going crazy today. Um, there's, and Alluvium's kind of the same way. Once we have a playable game um, and the graphics look amazing, the development is amazing. They just revamped all of the staking into a version two staking around Alluvium. And they're planning on acquiring Hollywood IP. They're planning on offering other AAA games and things through their system. It's a whole ecosystem is what you're, what you're getting there. You're, you're not just getting like one game or some game token. So I just kind of wanted to say that I'm excited. And if anybody wants to, you know, look into the, the, um, I had it queued up. I'll have to show it in a minute, but there's brand new staking around, um, it's, uh, the Illuvium staking too. It just, just was released and I'd like everybody to kind of take a look. Um, uh, you know, it's one of the, one of the things that I've been excited about this week. And, um, so yeah, I'll just leave it there, but I'm excited. I think it's going to do great. Um, Number seven, seven says, hey, Sam and Moo, for the sake of high risk and high return, which one of these three options would you choose? A Snoop's stash box NFT, compounding strong rewards, or doubling down on Wonderland time? Well, looking at the amount of strong that is being produced by my nodes, where I've long, I only started running them like mid-December, and I've already replaced them like a hundred percent. I've already like my money. I've already made back a hundred percent. I would say that because I think the Snoop stash box that that would have been something that you would have had to get already. Are those not like all grabbed up? Um, so what happened is they all didn't sell out the lottery for opening up the boxes. Uh, there were several people that apparently, you know how people are, they didn't understand kind of what a lottery meant. They thought they were entitled to some $200,000 item uh, that they could have been dropped. They were upset. Um, so what the team has decided to do is they're withholding uh, 2,500. They're going to put in a vault, which basically may be sold later, may not. And they're going to burn the rest uh, on Friday at 420 in the afternoon. <laughs> um, a lot of us over to the psychic nerds have been very interested in this. It's just kind of fun for us as uh, something that we were interested in. A lot of us bought these stash boxes at $4,000. They're now going for $6,200. Um, what else do I want to say about that? Oh, also to incentivize because people were whining and crying that maybe they didn't get a wonderful item uh, out of that box. Everybody in that opened that stash box, there's a red label nft song um and basically what they're saying is after they burn these boxes on friday anybody that's still holding one of those songs one of those red label songs that didn't just run out and flip it they're going to get another magical lottery item from the list i can tell you personally that i am extremely happy with the stash boxes that i purchased and i am well above what my cost was to purchase those but I can't say that's going to be the case for everybody. But when you're putting it up against Strong or Time Wonderland, it's a no-brainer to me. I wouldn't spend one second with Strong or Wonderland Time. And any thoughts around that, Sam? Well, I don't know enough about the Snoop stash box to um, say one way or the other. I mean, it sounds like everybody's up on their stash boxes where they're going for 6200 And if you paid four grand, well, I mean, that's more than 50% return in a couple of weeks. I mean, if you got that after a couple of years in on the Dow Jones, you're a happy camper, right? So absolutely. I think that's pretty good. Um, I definitely would say no to dumbling down on Wonderland time though, number seven. Thanks, Sam. Uh, Richard says, uh, there is a fractional real estate company on the algo chain. Looks interesting. It's called Lofty.ai. It does not currently have any naked native <laughs> I said naked native token. Also uses algo and some stable coins to fund its fractional purchases. Each property is set up under its own LLC. Lofty contracts all services, 
maintains financials and files taxes could be an excellent way to get real estate exposure in a geographically dispersed way to manage potential market risk was hoping you could try and get some info on this so what's interesting is um I'm, i don't know why this is gaining popularity but um not only this question, but a few people have asked me privately about this this week. So let me just pull it up. I don't know much about this project. Um, it looks like uh, people can invest into property. You can also sell your property into this system. Somehow it tokenizes. Oh, it wants me to fill out a, um, a questionnaire that takes two minutes. I'm not doing that. Um, it has some properties here. I don't really know much about this, Sam, so I can't really comment. Um, so this one's in Chicago. This one's in Cleveland. If we take a look and view all properties, I assuming this is only in the United States and it looks like only in select cities, Akron, Chicago, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Detroit, Memphis, St. Louis. Let's take a look at Detroit. Um, and it looks like you can, they're tokenizing these things, I think, in $25 chunks. No, I'm sorry. Each property is different. This one is $53.81. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one. I just don't know anything about this. Um, Sam, any thoughts? Um, what came to me while you were reading this to me sure. was that um, there are some issues with the management and control. You know, you get into the executive. Listen. People can do a website. They can try to put something together. But um, I would say we're not there yet on this kind of stuff. And that even though it's a really great idea, it's we're, we're just we're not there yet because there's always a chance that this kind of stuff would go under. Because again, you know, you know, what, what's the history of the people putting this together? Just like... Um, you know, just because someone's putting together a blockchain, you know, years ago when cryptocurrencies started on the forefront, people would invest in anything that had crypto in its name, like any company on the the um, Toronto Stock Exchange or the Dow Jones Industrial, they would have, they would just have a pile on with that stuff and not realizing, hey, you might get a group of people that they really don't know what they're doing or things don't work out. So here you have this, you've it's set up under its own LLC. Oh, well, isn't that great? Well, there you have no personal guarantees. Your money could just go bye-bye and you could sue this company, but oh, guess what? They're an LLC, they just closed down, right? So, you know, I I would I would rather just take my crypto profits, open up my own LLC and invest. Yeah, thanks, Sam. I, I appreciate that because that was kind of my feeling too. I mean, couldn't you do the same thing with crypto-backed loans or put a group of investors together that had lots of crypto and do the same thing kind of privately, but do it in a real way instead of kind of this way where you're, it might just disappear? <laughs> that doesn't sound too awesome. So uh, thanks, Sam, for seeing that. Lori M says, the price prediction for ApeCoin. Uh, thanks to both of you. What do you think about ApeCoin? Uh, loved it at two, three, four, five, six dollars. Um, let's just say I'm no longer an ape coin holder, uh, and uh, not uh, it's currently at almost fourteen dollars, I think 13 52. Um, I like what they're doing, I think it's a real project. There's a lot of money involved, so once again, kind of getting in on something that could be amazing by lots of wealthy individuals that know a lot of other wealthy individuals, right? It matters. That's how business is done. That's how the real world works. It's just, but um, I think it goes much higher from here. I don't have a price prediction. I don't do price. Do I think it goes higher than 1350? Yep. Yeah, I think that it, everything is pretty much as we watch the market rise, um, most of the stuff that we hold is going to go at least three times. It's just that some of the stuff you hold is going to go more than that. Some of it will go less. It'll only go like one and a half times. Like Bitcoin, for example. You know, Bitcoin's at 43,000. So, you know, it might go to 65,000. Well, that's only one and a half times, you know. Um, yeah. So I don't hold eight coin. And like you said, it would, would have been great to get at two or three dollars. But with these markets sizing up the way that they're sizing up and the runs that I expect that they'll go on, um, 
Would I be surprised if I saw ApeCoin at 130 bucks? No, absolutely not. I would not be surprised just because of the amount of money that's going to pour into the market over the coming months. Um, but because I didn't have an opportunity to get in on it when it was cheaper at two or three dollars. I'm looking at the multiple and I'm like, uh, $13, maybe it'll go to like 45, something like that. So, uh, no, I think I'll be just, I would rather buy more Cardano. Thanks, Sam. Started late in crypto. We have missed Solana and Avalanche. Which coins do you see flipping them in the future? Any of our favorites? Thank you. So um, for people who are, you know, later to the game, for example, like you don't have any 120 or $400 Ethereum that you bought, right? I would say that probably um, Solana and Avalanche would be your choices other than Ethereum, for example. Um, if you were like, no, I don't want to pay $3,000 for Ethereum, I w I'm willing to wait longer and take a higher, you know, take um, a higher risk, even though it's only slightly higher because again, Avalanche is doing very well. It seems to have made it over the hump as well as um, Solana already had like its major hack happen. <laughs> they always seem to have a major hack, don't they? Something always happens in early days that- Absolutely. Things up, you know, right? Yeah. But that's what I talk about. It's early days. So um, when you do that, you're trading it off and you're gonna, you're gonna realize that, you know, you're, you're taking some risk or you'll have some heart attack days where you'll be like, darn, I just dumped 30,000. Well, I mean, how many people just bought Solana and then had it tank like that? Um, it can happen. But again, you know, now it's running back to its all time high again. So, you know, that's the whole purpose of, you know, going with, I consider more lower risk have kind of made it over the hump that even if bad things happen, they're still going to come back again and again. Um, so I don't know what alternatives would be um, for that. I mean, the lower you go, like if you're buying Harmony, that's a much higher risk and it's reflected in the price versus Solana or Avalanche. Um, what would you say, Muant, would be other alternatives? Well, first of all, I don't see, you know, I, I don't know if I see anything flipping uh, or favorites flipping the ones that we're talking about. You know, we could pull up Near, for example, um, you know, Near. And this is what's tough, um, Nathalia. Like, uh, you know, if you missed out on the wonderful run last last fall, most of the market started dying in November, right? But you had this wonderful one in, in layer ones right through that fall time frame. There were some layer ones that didn't, that benefited, but didn't do extremely well during that fall time frame, right? Um, like, like we could go look at near, let's just do that. Um, am I saying near is a project on par with the two that you mentioned? No. Um, but you know, near is a good project. Uh, it's a good quality layer one project for, you know, a lot less price, but listen, I've learned long ago that I never let price influence what I buy. Um, at one time during the last cycle, Ethereum was $1,400. It ran all the way back, what, Sam, to 73 um, in that cycle. Um, try and just buy good things and try and distinguish what good things are. Um, during the, the pandemic crash, you know, a lot of people were able to get 75, 78, 80, $83 Ethereum. We've seen Ethereum go, what, Sam, 4,700 bucks, something like that, 43. Um, so I don't really have a good answer for you. Um, but some of these projects, even if you felt like you missed Solana and Avalanche, like you had an opportunity in the last few weeks to, to have some other layer ones that did well. Heck, uh, Cardano has done super well in the last couple of days, right, Sam? Um, so there's, there are things out there. Um, I, I maybe, I, I guess I'm saying all this just to say, you know, if you feel like you missed something, you might have missed a quality project. When it gets a pullback, you want, might want to get a little exposure to it. Um, or you might want to look at some other projects. I don't really know what I'm saying here. Uh, I, I don't know if you've missed Solana and Avalanche. I don't know if you have. Uh, I think they have good futures. Um, are they as tested, robust as something like Ethereum? No, but that's why the Ethereum costs what it costs because people trust it. Uh, and it's the most hacked smart layer one contract platform in the world. So it's a lot of trust there. So I'll just leave it there. I wish I had a better answer for you.
Yeah. Um, yeah well, I mean, she's looking past Solana and Avalanche and feeling like there's an alternative to that and asking me if I can see one through the ethos there. And, you know, I mean, Avalanche just sort of snuck up on me sort of all of a sudden I had to get it, you know, so this yeah. stuff sort of comes to me just all at once and at the right time when, you know, there's been a big beat up in the market. Um, but I don't, I don't have like a favorite, um, like Avalanche right now is sort of my competitor to Ethereum where I did really well on my Ethereum and I'm sort of looking at, um, excuse the pun, ETH, my ETH 2.0. <laughs> That's not ETH. <laughs> so, so right now it's Avalanche to me, maybe Solana to you, um, you know, I, yeah. I think both are going to do really great. And I yeah. just want to encourage Nathalia, um, Nathalia to buy some and not feel like they've missed it. Right. Um, yeah. I, thank you, Sam. Thanks. Uh, Fireflower says, good day, Sam and Moo. I've been in cryptos 11 months and I have about 10 to 12 coins invested. My portfolio is only, is it okay if I say this number or? Yeah, it's fine. Uh, 15,567 at present. I have 6,000 to invest uh, now. And I wonder if I should wait until next week to invest. My gut is telling me that we are on a run for this month at the end of March. What would you invest your six grand into if with in which coins? <clears throat> and is it on the rise now? And next week will be more expensive. Well, I mean, obviously it depends on which ones that you buy. And I'm more into the macro than the micro as in, but I do happen to get some really good calls on the short term. Um, it definitely would have been better for you to have bought when the market was 1.8, you know, and that you could buy Cardano for, you know, 84 cents instead of at the buck 18 that it's currently at. I mean, people just literally made like 40% on their money in a week. Oh, there it is. It's up 40%. Um, and I mean, I was telling everybody to get Cardano last week because it would be going on a big run again. And I feel like it's going to go back to its all time high. But again, you know, it's already up 40%. So if you have six grand to put in, I wouldn't say necessarily that you should wait um, I think Polygon, I think that that one has not gone on a big run as of yet. It is up 10%, but remember, it's all-time high was well over $2. So um, that is still a really good buy. Um, uh, let's see, your Sandbox. Now, Sandbox, I think that, that one looks like a good buy to me. And um, Phantom... Um, Phantom's days are not numbered. I believe right. that it just took a hit, that it's going to come back around. I'm sure, sure. you feel the same way. You feel Absolutely. Same way that. Yeah. 100%. So I would probably, yeah, I would put that on the list for sure. Um, and again, the graph had a little bit of a pullback. Um, you know, so that one is a good buy. Everything else, everything else is up this week. But again, the graph was up quite a bit already. So it took a little bit of a pullback. I probably wouldn't be favoring it except that it has taken a little bit of a pullback just where it did run so much last week. Um, Chainlink is another one that I think is really, really undervalued because Polkadot has popped up like to $21, but Chainlink is like only at $16.24. So that would be my short list um, for what's going to happen between this week and next week. Um, and this, Firefly, I kind of, I, I kind of give sort of the same answer that it gave... <laughs> on the last question you know some of these things people feel like they missed i i don't know if you missed anything you know i i don't know um you know for example obvious all-time high was up here at 700 dollars. you know look at that i mean yes obvious had an incredible run today it had an incredible run uh about a week ago um yeah you could have got this thing just at like 100 bucks but uh it's 170 I think 170 compared to 700 is pretty awesome. Uh, it is a wonderful blue chip decline. Um, and then, you know, I could say the same. I'll just roll back to the ones we've already been talking about. And I, cause I don't know what you're holding, right? Um, you gave us a dollar amount, but I don't know what you're holding. Uh, but you know, you could have bought AVAX up here at 146. It's setting at 87, right? Um, so there are opportunities, um, yeah, and then let me just quickly pull up Solana. 
um, you know, uh, I guess be glad you didn't buy Solana up here at 260 or whatever. Right now it's just setting at a hundred bucks. So just over a hundred bucks. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Lots of opportunity still there. So just yep. breathe, relax. And, you know, when you have money to put in, I know you always want to pick the ones that have the best sort of short term, but I always say, well, you know, when I'm buying stuff, I'm staying in it for more than a year anyways. So that's why I'm not really getting any more new stuff. And, um, the stuff that was donated for readings, like the cryptos, that's claimed as income. So it's only the difference between what I, um, when I kept keeping it, and then I make sure I keep those ones. Like my BVS finance, I'll keep that for at least a year from the date that I received it as income for doing readings. Because, like, you yeah. know, then, then you do the long-term capital gains on the more than 12 months. So again, when I made my list up of, okay, these are the cryptos that I would like to get for, I'm willing to do readings for cryptos now, here's the list. And that's sort of my list of what's going to do better between like now and the next 12 months. Because even VVS Finance might have gone down like a little bit, but I mean, that's happened before. I, I get all big on, um, on a vet when it was like um, four tenths of a penny and it went right. down to a quarter of a penny. Um, I right. get all big on Tezos at 60 cents and it went down to 40 cents and then turned around and, you know, started galloping a lot. So again, um, you know, I really am definitely a medium who looks at the longer, the short, longer term, I guess is, um, but we do get those bombs dropped just like, um, you know, we could pull up a reading that I gave, the week, just a few days before graph went on a big run. And I mean, you could watch all my readings up to that point and I didn't mention the graph to anybody. And then all of a sudden I get all hot to trot for graph, right? And I find, I find that that does happen. And you know, and you guys bring that out with me when we're doing these crypto reviews as well. So I don't want to sort of kick dirt on that. Yes, I can do that. Um, but what I really love about us getting together here today is we also get to talk about some very much common sense stuff too. Absolutely, me too. Uh, Bill D says, uh, do you think Theta will take out its all-time high by May? Um, yeah, I think so. I think it'll take out its all-time high. I hope so, because I missed my $10 sell. So then I hung out for the tea drop. <laughs> and I said I wasn't going to. I was like, oh, and then I then then I got like a little inkling, like it just sort of yeah. came into my head. Oh yeah. yeah, you're gonna you're yeah, you're gonna have to, you're gonna do that tea drop. Oh well. I was like, all the way to February, really? So I knew it wasn't gonna go past its ten dollars again by February because I ended up participating in the tea drop. Sure. And then I was like, I'll just catch it again. And I'll probably sell, I'll probably set my sell now at $15 just because like with Doge where I missed my 25 cents, it would blue pass that. So I set it at 40 cents as my first jump off for my first, you know, profit taking on Doge. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that with Theta as well, Bill. So thanks so much for the opportunity for me to give you guys a blab on that. Congratulations if you hung in there for the tea drop. Because now if you're like me, you got tea fuel for free, you got your tea drop for free and you still got your Theta. So there you go. Um, hang in there. It's not over yet for Theta, um, and I'm really happy that uh, it, that I do see it surpassing its all-time high by May, or at least by the end of the year, but probably by May. Thanks, Sam. Uh, we don't have much time, Sam, uh, just uh, five or ten minutes here left. So let me uh, just kind of pick through on this next one. is from Dutch Rooney. It says, I've read a bit of the IRS may declare crypto loans as taxable events. Do you see this happening, and when? Uh, no, not ever. Uh, hey, Sam, uh, do you have a price prediction for AMP? It's currently setting at $0.03. Cents. Thanks. Um, uh, short term, 10 times easily. And um, it was one of the um, 100 times coins. But again, you know, dollar cost average opportunity and then hold on to it into the just I only saw single dollars, but, you know, where it's so cheap. Right. Between anywhere between two and five cents, you can dollar cost average in a lot. I think that you still have a little bit more time. You're probably going to see eight or nine cents for AMP, though, as the market starts to go on the run. So, you know, you'll be wishing for those days that you could have got it at three cents. Um, but again, it's I do see it um, going to over a dollar. Thanks, Sam. Uh, Julie G is asking, uh, I have few Amazon stocks. Do you does it? Do you it going way down during stock market? Do you see it going way down during stock market correction? 
Yes. Yeah. All of those. Well, all of them. will, and, and, you know, people will be shaken into reality for the prices that they were paying for their stocks. And a lot of the speculation um, is going to move from Amazon into the cryptocurrency sphere. Uh, next one is Sandra says, uh, when do you see VVS finance going to a penny? Um, I would say that um, within the next year or two, because again, you know, I just started getting VVS finance and I'm looking at, it has to be like more than 12 months because I'm looking for one that is going to be under the long-term capital gain. So I don't lose, um, well, by then I would be a resident of Mexico. And so the top end here is 35% on personal. Um, if they decided to, to have me declare something as income. Um, so again, you know, I think that, uh, over 12 months from now before it goes to a penny, probably closer to two years. Thanks, Sam. Uh, Sue G says, hey guys, uh, do you, how do you feel about Newton in Canada? It seems easy to buy coins, Newton. I don't know anything about Newton. Yeah, I would just take a look at the fees for Newton. That would be my only big concern is the fees. You know, if it's easy to buy, that's really great and stuff, but you know, what are they charging you for fees? Is Newton like a Coinbase type of setup or is it more like, because I found like the Bittrex had much better prices. Sure. Uh, Sam, do you know if you can physically settle out of this? Is this like a, is it like a um, Robin Hood thing or is this more like a, an actual crypto exchange? Um, I think Sue G would probably know more about okay. that for okay. sure, because I have not used Newton and I, and until she mentioned it, I had not, I had not heard about it before, but yeah, okay. I would check into it and make sure that um, you could transfer your cryptos out into another wallet, because that's how you can tell whether or not they're just like, I call it spoofing cryptos. You know, because listen, if you cannot withdraw those cryptos from that exchange and put it in your own wallet, which is away from the prying eyes of whoever it is that might want to steal from you these cryptos, because okay. mm -hmm. um, exchanges are hacked all the time. Most okay. times when you lose your cryptos in your wallet, it's because you lost your seed words or your wallet malfunctioned and you never copied your private keys anywhere. Um, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So normally if you lose it in, in your, in your cold wallet in cold storage, it's your own fault. And if you lose it on an exchange, you may well have been hacked on an exchange or had somebody put a key logger on your computer and then they just got your password and stuff to get on your exchange. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the best way to check that out guys with Newton is that, and if you can take that, your cryptos off, and put it in your cold storage, then I'll give a big thumbs up for that because the regulators are very much protective of the, they actually do protect the Canadian population. Um, and so they, anything that's been regulated in the, in Canada is usually pretty solid. Thanks, Sam. Really appreciate that. Uh, this next one is from Julie. Strong keeps going down. Sam, when do you see it running? Lou, why are you not big on strong. Um, you know, people just ask me my honest opinion about it or people have reached out to me and they bought it at the top and listen, it, it just reminds me of cloud mining scam from last cycle. If I have a node, I want to be able to touch the node. I want to be able to input commands into it. This just kind of seems like a Ponzi scheme to me. I think they're just paying people out for new money coming in. The tokens that people want to stake there, you can just stake them. You, there's other ways to stake them or, or to do things or whatever. So uh, I just don't have a need for it. And I'm just, I had a bad feeling uh, from it from the beginning. Um, Sam, your thoughts, what, what, when do you see it running? I guess. Well, it's going to run with everything else running. Um, and I do see the top end of it being around 1200. And, you know, at that point, um, you know, I think that um, what's happening is that a lot of people are cashing out. They're strong, like as it's, it, it's almost undoing itself in the sense that it produces so many strong. And when people take them out and cash them, it does lower the value of the strong because people are getting out, right? Like they're cashing in what the strong is producing for them. So I think that that is just what's going on with the system right now. Um, as the market starts to go up, um, 
more and more people will buy this strong, especially when you see that all the nodes are sold out. It's not there yet. They're at about 60%. So when you're in a down market, um, people are looking at ways to, um, you know, they're, they're searching around where they can get some money out. Cause not everybody is like us where you just invested in cryptos and you're just holding on, you know, you're not using it for your everyday bills. I think that a lot of people, who have these strong nodes, we're looking at it producing an income and an income for them like right now. So, and that's been part of the problem is that people are, are not reinvesting in their strong, they're just cashing it out. And so that, that has a negative effect on the price. Um, you know, and again, I caution people to keep their strong nodes to a minimum. I only have two myself um, because I saw that that would easily, you know, pay for itself. Um, I would make my money back plus more, but I wasn't willing to put more than, you know, a decimal point of my assets. It was a very tiny percentage of your portfolio, right? Yeah. 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 And so many people were talking about it and using it. And I was just like, well, you know, I don't want to be irresponsible and tell people not to do it. And then it ends up being like this great big thing. But then actually using it myself, I saw, okay, you have to pay the fee monthly, on it so that's how they're making money okay good it's good to see that they have a reason to keep this going right you know because they're getting the fee so like why would you close it down you're getting this fee every month from people maintaining their strong nodes so i do feel like the price going down that that is a temporary thing for now and you'll see the price will be increasing just watch the number of nodes that have been sold right because people are reinvesting their strong into new nodes and then you'll see that five hundred thousand. Um, that they have there available right now, they've already sold 310,000. So when you see that become 500,000 and there's no longer any more strong nodes available, then you'll start to see that's probably when the price is going to go back to its all time high. And Harrison's got the last question for today. It says, uh, Hey Sam, we just hit 44 K for BTC exclamation point. Uh, wouldn't it be something if we wake up uh, in the coming days to see 50,000 plus BTC, just like you blabbed. Sam, give us the blabs. <laughs> well, you know, it was just like with Ethereum. Um, last time we got together, I felt that Ethereum would hit um, 3,000. If it didn't hit it on the weekend, it would hit mm -hmm. it shortly thereafter. And mm -hmm. it did. It hit 3,000. It pulled back a bit to like 2,900 and stuff. But now as in the following Thursday, we're very confidently into the 3,000s now for Ethereum. Mm -hmm. Um, and I also, also felt that the 50,000 for Bitcoin, that that was a very reasonable um, goal to set that, you know, there's no reason why it wouldn't go to 50,000. And like I said, I, I don't see it at 100,000, but I did see um, 84,000. That was a number that came nice. up. I don't know. Was it on the weekly crypto review maybe two months ago? Gosh, I don't remember, Sam. Uh, I don't remember. I think it might have been on the Psychic Nurse program. Is that possible? Oh, okay. you mentioned 84 yeah. on a Friday. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, I think so. It could have been on a psychic nerds as well. So um, and also we talk about this stuff in our in our our I call it the pre-party. Yeah. <laughs> <We're psychic nerds. laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the after party. So we talk about a lot of different things then. But yeah, I definitely see. Bitcoin's going to go on a nice little run again. It'll be in the news again. It's going to get more people into cryptos. It's going to be awesome. So just uh, hold on for the ride. And uh, by the time I see you guys next week, I will have already been to California and back by then. Sweet. That's awesome, Sam. Just want to take a look at the uh, biggest winners for today on my charts that I follow. Axie uh, doing great. Gods Unchained is doing great. Avi is doing great. Uh, Quick Token is, is or any token they call that now lido finance phantasma soul doing great today sam uh thanks for saving my soul um a lot of good winners i'm just excited sam i'm super excited thank you very much you guys uh for all the questions and i'll see you tomorrow on second nerds bye for now <laughs>